had a lot of episodes on that recently. Nevertheless, we have this slide. Yeah, so in lung cancer patients, especially those without a driver mutation, we all are using immunotherapy in the second line. It's a standard option. And in spite of that treatment, patients who progress on frontline therapy, these are people who don't have a very great outcome. Most of them are uh, unable to survive for a long period of time. The idea was to add on a cytotoxic chemotherapy along with immunotherapy, which may modulate the tumor microenvironment and increase cytotoxicity of these cells. This has been reported with platinum compounds, taxins, and vinca alcohol. The major issue with all of these is, is long term administration of these drugs produces a lot of toxicity, cumulative toxicity. So, beyond a particular time frame, using these drugs is not feasible. Atazolizumab is a PDL1 inhibitor. It has established a role in lung cancer. We've heard a lot about it recently. The Oak study showed that it was superior compared to docetaxel in second line lung cancer. Metronomic chemotherapy has been the buzzword and well, from Mumbai, uh, from TMH, we've seen so many papers about oral metronomic uh, chemotherapy. Metronomic chemotherapy means basically small doses given at frequent intervals, much lower doses than the standard dose. This is shown to have anti-angiogenic and pro-immune properties. So the logical combination was to do a metronomic dose along with atazolizumab. So with metatazol means a combination of metronomic venerelvin and atazolizumab in patients with relapsed lung cancer without a driver mutation. The objective was to assess safety and efficacy of this combination. So a small study, so an open label phase 2 non-randomized study of patients with lung cancer without any mutation who had progressed on frontline platinum tablet chemotherapy. Patients who are more than 18 years of age, adequate organ function and all that. More importantly, the ECOG performance status allowed up to 3. Normally most of the trials have ECOG PS 0 to 1. This also allowed patients with ECOG 0 uh, up to 2. There was a safety running phase uh, in 12 patients who received the metronomic oral mineral windows, which was 40 mg thrice a week, in combination with a fixed dose of atazolizumab of 1200 mg. And these patients were monitored for adverse events. Once they had completed at least one cycle of treatment, then the enrollment was interrupted and the study was initiated and the patients received the same combination till progression. A total of 80 patients were uh, screened, 12 patients including 12 in the run-in phase, 9 patients failed screening, overall 71 patients were analyzed for the primary outcome. Median age was 64 years, most of them were males and most of them were either active or ex-smokers. 90% of the patients had an ECOG performance status of 0 to 1. So, good PS majority, though they said up to 3, most of them were 0 to 1. PDL1, this study was for all comers, but PDL1 was studied and it was uh, positive in about half of these patients. Most of the patients were non squamous uh, lung cancers and a small handful had squamous cell carcinoma. At a median follow up of uh, 8.1 months from the initiation of treatment, the 4 month PFS rate was 32% and median PFS was 22 months. The OS rate was 73.2% at 4 months and 24.3% at 24 months. The median OS was about 8 months. There was a tendency for more favorable PFS in patients with PDL1 who had more than 1%. The overall response rate, disease control rate at uh, 4 months were about 11 and 32% respectively. Now, for this study, they had initiated a cutoff that if 36 people had no progression, then this combination would have been taken to a phase 3 level. But in this study, non progressors were only 23 out of 71, and this was less than the pre decided number. There were quite a few adverse events, but most of them were uh, not very severe. 98.5% uh, patients had. Uh, uh, Ad adverse events, the grade 3 uh, uh, 4 adverse events were few, only 5.1%. The most frequent adverse event was diarrhea, vomiting, anemia. One grade 5 had, uh, death was reported because of pneumonia, probably related to antisome. So, this study failed to show benefit of PFS as per the pre-decided criteria. And this probably study was began much before Pembro became the standard of care in the frontline setting and then got published later. The uh, authors also feel that the efficacy may have been reduced as the patients, there were patients up to PS3, but there were very few patients, barely 10%, and they also had a high number of patients with liver metastasis, almost one-fourth of patients had liver met, so that could affect the efficacy of this combination. So today, when Pembro is approved in the frontline, this study has a very doubtful relevance. 
may have a role if a patient has not received immunotherapy in the frontline setting due to whatever reason, has a fair amount of symptomatic burden, then you may offer this combination in second line sequentially along with an oral metronomic chemotherapy. Thank you.